our special report, the program that brings you a ground zero view from whichever part of the country the Rajya Sabha TV cameras are travelling. This week we are in the state of Orissa in the backdrop of beautiful Niamgiri Hills. But this mountain has caught in a controversy between Vedanta's bauxite mining project. In fact, you can see the Vedanta refinery right behind me and the livelihoods of the primitive Dongria and Kuntia tribes here. But how does the government do this balancing act of bringing in the investors and rehabilitating the local population? Well, it's a tough call, replete with multitudinal challenges. Come on a journey this time with me to Niamgiri Hills. Kalahandi, once known for starvation deaths, is today the epicenter of a heated development versus environment debate. The primitive communities of some 9,000 Dongrias and Kutia Korn tribes have managed to take their fight from the foothills of Niamgiri to the streets of London. Rajya Sabha TV crew travelled to Niamgiri to assess the realities that led to the battle between the primitive Dongria tribals and the multi-billion Vedanta group that seeks to roll out a mining project. After a 600 km drive from Bhuvaneshwar, we are finally at Lanjigarh, where Vedanta has set up an alumina refinery. Niamgiri Hill is divided between the two districts of Kalahandi and Raigara. Right now we are at the Kalahandi district and behind me you can see the Vedanta Alumina refinery running exactly at the foothill of Niamgiri Hills. From here we begin our journey to the Niamgiri Hills. We drove through the dense forests of Raigara district but motorable road ends in the middle of nowhere and we have no option but to travel by foot to reach the villages. When you walk across these dense forests of Niamgiri, you come across small pockets of Special Operation Group Commandos who are on a constant combing operation as this area is heavily infested by the Naxals. But in this particular case, the Gram Sabha is being held for the tribals, they are here for the security of people like you and me who are here. As we go further into the forest, we realize the terrain is not very friendly for visitors. When you are moving around this Niamgiri hill area, there are 41 streams like these which you have to cross. So there is no option if you have to reach a village, you have to cross these streams. And while we are doing so, there is the apprehension of getting attacked by wild animals like tigers, wild boars, and not to forget the Naxals. I've been walking for the last 14 kilometers and God alone knows when this distance is going to end. After a full day's walk, we come face to face with the Dongrias. The first glimpse does not show how aloof they are from the outside world, but they know what hospitality is all about. With weather conditions worsening, it's difficult for us to go back the same day. They invited us to stay overnight. They never allow outsiders inside their huts, but here we are. They expect us to side with them in their battle with a large conglomerate. They are now convinced that we share their concerns and will present their cause before the world. Mm -hmm. 
And before we retire for the night, some doors of merry making as well. A new day begins with prayers to their deity Niam Raja, the deity which protects the Niamgiri mountain. This hill is the source of life and livelihood for the Dongrias. The mountain gives them vegetables, fruits, animals to hunt, shelter and water. They sustain themselves mainly by growing paddy, pineapple and oranges. I've been staying here at this Kesarpari village for the last two days and around these forested hill slopes it seems you've entered the primitive world because you're totally cut off from the cell phones, newspapers, internet. You just don't know what is happening in the outside world. Dongria cones have been waging a war against mining in Niamgiri hills by the Vedanta group for over a decade. The company has been trying all possible measures with the help of the state government to go ahead with its bauxite mining project but the tribals are not ready to let go. In the course of their struggle, they have added two new words to the vocabulary of Kui, their primitive language. A mention of these words, Vedanta and mining make them few. There is just no semblance of development in all these villages in Yamgiri. There is not even a single school, no facility for drinking water, health or sanitation. These tribals have formed a little government of their own and the most mesmerizing thing is that they do not want any interference from the outside world. We are ready to shed our blood for Niamgiri. Dongria Khans want their deity Niam Raja to be left undisturbed. They fear ecological destruction and the drying up of streams. So while I help these Dongrias to begin their day, let's take a break at this point in time and return with lots more. Back in a moment. Vedanta had planned to mine 660 hectares on the Niamgiri hilltops for an estimated 2 billion ton of bauxite, having invested 50,000 crore already. Vedanta is Orissa's largest foreign investor. Due to the intervention of social groups including international NGOs, Vedanta Alumina Refinery at Lanjigar had to stop its operations several times. The protests evolved into an outpouring, eventually taking the shape of a global green movement. How much mining this country needs and for what, at what cost and that nobody reflects, nobody thinks, everybody thinks the people are a hodl. You know, this way they are thinking and now at least they will be compelled to think what actually we need, how much we need and at what cost. You know, all these questions which we have ignored over the years, we will be forced to reflect on. 
activists feel that Vedanta's plan to mine the Niamgiri hills will actually violate the community's economic, social and cultural rights and more importantly their rights as an indigenous group. Mining is not the solution for development. Uh, if mining happens, then only outsider people, uh, uh, many uh, established people, leaders, uh, bureaucrats, contractors, they will only prosper, not the tribals. Development, we need development. The tribals of this area are development, but not, the cost, not at the cost of their livelihood. After a protracted legal battle which has stretched for more than a decade, Supreme Court in its April 18th judgment ordered that Gram Sabhas should take a final view on the proposed bauxite mining project in Niamgiri Hills. What you see behind me is actually the Gram Sabha being held at the Iji Rupa village in the Niamgiri Hill. It's the first environment referendum being held in the state of Orissa. It's a landmark event in the sense that for the first time the police and the judiciary are at the doorstep of the tribals who are just about to redefine their rights, their right to livelihood. <laughs> As per Orissa government's decision, Gram Sabhas were conducted in 12 villages where Dongria Khan tribals gave an emphatic no to mining in Niamgiri. They passed two resolutions, one opposing mining and the second claiming religious rights over the Niamgiri hills. Proceedings and resolutions would now be sent to the Union Ministry of Environment and Forest, which would take a final view on the forest clearance of the mining project, which was withdrawn in August 2010 by the then Union Minister Jairam Ramesh. The Supreme Court is also fully aware of the constitutional safeguards that the Founding Fathers have, had provided for those living in these regions uh, and as protectors of the Constitution, I am sure the Supreme Court will not allow such illegal activities to go on. We will not leave Niamgiri on any cost. Come what may. The fate of the bauxite mining project does not look very bright. Vedanta may now have to look for an alternative mining site to feed its alumina refinery at Lanjigarh. जो इधर रिफाइनरी बनाया है, वो ओडिशा गवर्नमेंट के साथ एक एमओयू हुआ था, एक 150 मिलियन टन का बॉक्साइट चाहिए। तो ओडिशा गवर्नमेंट का जो ओएमसी, ओडिशा माइनिंग कॉरपोरेशन ने, वो नियम के रिमाइंस को वहाँ से बक्सा निकाल के वेदांत को देने के लिए वो प्लान में था। ऑलरेडी आपको पता है स्टेज वन क्लीरेंस भी हो गया था, लेकिन स्टेज टू क्लीरेंस के बाद कुछ प्रॉब्लम हुआ 2010 को MOF से कुछ रिजेक्शन आया। In 2010, the Ministry of Environment and Forest had rejected the clearance to the joint venture of Orissa Mining Corporation Limited and Sterlite Industries, which is the Indian arm of the London Stock Exchange listed Vedanta, to mine the Niamgiri Hills for bauxite ore to feed the Vedanta's alumina refinery here. But MOEF's grounds for rejection mainly were violation of Forest Rights Act, Forest Conservation Act and Environment Protection Act. But this order was challenged later by the Orissa Mining Corporation Limited in the Supreme Court in 2011. Bauxite mining in Niamgiri is crucial for raw material security of Vedanta Aluminium Limited, which had set up its 1 million ton per annum alumina refinery at the cost of 5,000 crore on the assurance of bauxite supply from this mine, owned by Urissa Mining Corporation. The Lanjiga refinery is currently running at 60% capacity by sourcing bauxite from outside the state. Vedanta is also hoping to get its supplies now from Balko's Kavada mines in Chhattisgarh. This conveyor belt which you see behind me was actually meant to export the bauxite ore from the mining site to the refinery plant. But thanks to all the legal interventions, this conveyor belt is shut shop. So, so far as this continuance of Vedanta is concerned, government of Odisha has formed a group of ministers for uh, GOM mm. and the terms of reference is long-term linkage to the 
mine uh, mineral based industries so bauxite is one of them while the increase in cost of bauxite from outside the state works out to 1600 to 2000 per ton bauxite secured from jharkhand maharashtra and chatisgarh will put an additional burden of 600 crore on the company affecting the viability of the plant The Society of Geoscientists and Allied Technologists that is SGAT has argued in favor of permitting mining in the region criticizing undue political interference and NGO activism they have tried to draw attention towards the development potential of bauxite that India should harness they have also argued that mining will in no way affect the livelihoods of the tribals and their centuries old religious cultural and social practices dekhiye jis bhi gram sabha ho raha hai jo area mein jo jahan pe ho raha hai udhar 20-25 जो लोग विरोध करते हैं वो आदमी का मौजूद उधर रहता है लेकिन आप कभी एक कोई सपोर्टर आदमी का मौजूद आप देखे क्या अभी तक नहीं देखे हैं क्योंकि इंडिपेंडेंट होगा और ग्राम सभा उसके ऊपर हमारा भरोसा है और सुप्रीम कोर्ट के डिसीजन पर हमारा पूरा भरोसा है For tribals, Vedanta's bauxite mining project is a destroyer. But for many people who have been rehabilitated around the Lanjigarh refinery, it's a blessing and source of development. कुछ टाइप हुआ है उनका कुछ पैसा वैसा चक्कर में है जो वो चीज़ अगर वेदांता को नहीं मिलेगा वो पहाड़ तो इनसे कुछ फायदा होने वाला है पैसा वो कंपनी जो बिजनेस ट्रांजेक्शन का जो कंपनी है तो वेदांता का एग्नेस्ट में जो कंपनी इस्तेमाल करते हैं जो लोग को इंडिया इज द फोर्थ लार्जेस्ट बॉक्साइड बेरिंग कंट्रीज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड विद उड़ीसा होल्डिंग द लार्जेस्ट रिजर्व दिस वास्ट रिसोर्स नीड्स टू बी एक्सप्लोइटेड टू इंक्रीज द प्रोडक्शन ऑफ एल्यूमिनियम सो दैट कॉन्सिक्वेंटली द पर कैपिटल कंजम्पन कैन बी रेज विच इज अ लोली वन पॉइंट टू के जी इन इंडिया इज कम्पेयर टू ट्वेल्व पॉइंट टू के जी इन चाइना एंड अ ग्लोबल एवरेज ऑफ इलेवन पॉइंट टू के जी We went inside the Vedanta township to see the kind of development done in the area. We came across a school, a super speciality hospital, but the biggest question is at what cost? Is whatever being done enough for the Dongria tribes? Let's take a short break now and return on the other side with lots more on the mining project in Niamgiri Hills and the Dongria tribes. battle to protect niamgiri has pitted tribals against the state the center against the state and the congress against b2 janata dal in 2010 congress vice president rahul gandhi vowed to protect the dongrias after which political heat between bjd and congress rose adivasiyon ki garib janta ki awaaz kutli ja rahi thi उनकी आवाज दिल्ली की सरकार ने सुन ली ये विकास के खिलाफ बात नहीं है ये विकास की बात है The image of the Adivasis protecting their sacred mountain against a mineral hungry corporate has resonated across the world and even put further pressure on the center Odisha is now proposing that mining lessees pay for the development of tribal communities इंडस्ट्री में आपको मालूम है डायरेक्ट इनडायरेक्ट एम्प्लॉयमेंट होता है तो जरूर रोजगार मिलेगा मेरे मेरा ख्याल से रोजगार मिलेगा मैं तो बोला हूँ मैं खुद एक इंडस्ट्री से काम करके आया हूँ अगर इंडस्ट्री नहीं होता तो आज मैं मिनिस्ट्री नहीं बन पाता It's not Niamgiri protests alone but heat over land acquisition is soaring in India as the country's growing economy looks to get land from farmers at times with violent results. In 2007 when the CPM government in West Bengal unveiled plans to take over land in Nandigram for a chemical park villagers clashed with the government forces. The violence lasted over a year killing 14 people and injuring many more. In 2011 Bloody protests broke out in Orissa over the construction of a road as part of a massive steel mill project. Women and children formed a human chain to prevent work. 
According to the Washington-based Rights and Resources Initiative, the land grab protests are likely to worsen. In 2011, there were protests in 130 districts in the country. The report squarely blames the government agencies and the private investors for the growing spate of clashes. We have to find the right balance between investment and between people's rights. So without commenting on this specific project, I would like to say that it is very urgent that we find a national consensus. So that uh, it is not just this project, but there will be dozens of such projects, maybe hundreds of such projects throughout the country where we need to have answers. The Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Bill is still awaited. The bill will be introduced afresh with changes suggested by the opposition. This landmark legislation could well change the way rehabilitation of local communities is done and may help encourage investors. We are very keen that this bill is uh, passed in Parliament this session. But unfortunately the opposition has not allowed us to uh, pass a single legislation in the Lok Sabha. Uh, so hopefully if Parliament allowed, is allowed to do its work. The development discourse cannot overlook the environment and the lives of local communities. The referendum at Niamgiri should become established precedent. For the government, it's surely a wake-up call. Local opposition to mega mining, power and manufacturing projects stems from genuine concerns. It's time for attempts to find an alternative, eco-friendly development paradigm. While the debate on development and displacement looks long and interminable, our stay with the Dongria tribals was short-lived. We had to bid them goodbye, not offering a solution, but a ray of hope. Whether Vedanta's bauxite mining project will take off or not is a million dollar question, but the livelihoods of the primitive Dongria and the Kutia tribes is surely at stake. Somewhere down the line, the governments need to balance out investments with the livelihoods of these local people who have cocooned in themselves the rich cultural legacy of India. Time for us to wrap this edition of our special report. While I move out from the Niamgiri Hills to my destination in Delhi, I'll see you on another journey with another issue. Goodbye and thanks for watching.